It is an atomic bomb. It is a harnessing of the basic power of the universe. The force from which the sun draws its power has been loosed against those who brought war to the Far East. What has been done is the greatest achievement of organized science in history. On the 6th of August, 1945, the U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on the Japanese city of Hiroshima. On the 9th, they detonated another on Nagasaki. On the 15th, six days after the Nagasaki bombing, Japan surrendered to the Allies. On the 2nd of September, Japan signed the Instrument of Surrender, putting an end to the hostilities of World War II. What happened during those days from the 6th of August to the 2nd of September? How did the bombings end World War II? Was it even the event that ended the war to begin with? It's the 6th of August, 1945, 12 o'clock midnight. Colonel Paul Tibbetts Jr., the pilot of the bomber plane Enola Gay, gave his final briefing to the crews of 509CG, tasked for the special bombing mission number 13. This is Colonel Paul Tibbetts of Miami, Florida, commander of the Atomic Bomb Group. Colonel Tibbetts, will you tell us some of your reactions over the target? The 509th Composite Group, or 509CG, a unit of the United States Army Air Forces created during World War II, was tasked to deploy nuclear weapons. Accompanying the Enola Gay were two observation planes, the Great Artiste and Necessary Evil, where there were cameras and scientific equipment. They were headed to Hiroshima. On the Enola Gay was an atomic bomb, codenamed Little Boy. Fifteen minutes later, Chaplain William Downey invited the crew for a prayer. At 1.37 a.m., three weather planes, Straight Flush, Jabet 3, and Full House, took off to assess the weather over Hiroshima, Kokura, and Nagasaki. At 2.20 a.m., the Enola Gay crew had their photo taken. Tibbets told his crew, Okay, let's go to work. At 2.45, they took off. At 2.47, the Great Artiste took off. At 2.49, Necessary Evo followed. 2.45 a.m., alone. The Enola Gay begins her flight to one of three cities on the islands of Japan. Later at 7.30 a.m., Tibbetts announced to the crew, We are carrying the world's first atomic bomb. The crew then wore their parachutes and flak suits. At 8.09, an air raid alert was communicated in Hiroshima. The weather plane Straight Flush sent Tibbetts a coded message that said, Advice, bomb primary. Tibbetts announced, It's Hiroshima. They sent a one-word message to the squadron security chief on Iwo Jima, William L. Uwana, primary. It was the peak of the morning rush hour in Hiroshima. At 9.12, a Radio Hiroshima operator reported three planes spotted. At 9.14, Tibbetts told the crew on glasses. The 60-second sequence to the automatic release of the bomb was engaged. At exactly 9.15.15, the bomb bay doors opened. Little boy was dropped. Bombardier Thomas Farabee called Bomb Away. This is Major Tom Farabee of Marksville, North Carolina, bombardier of the first atomic bomber. Major Farabee, will you give us some of your reactions over the target of Hiroshima? Tibbets took a sharp turn to the right. At exactly 9.16.02, Little Boy exploded on Hiroshima. The Enola Gay was already 11 and a half miles away. With his back from the explosion, Tibbets witnessed a silver-blue flash. His mouth felt as if someone poked a fork on the lead and silver fillings in his mouth. The tail gunner, Bob Karen, the only one facing Hiroshima, witnessed a shimmer in the atmosphere flying towards the plane. A red and purple mass rose to the sky. A mushroom cloud formed. Karen likened it to a peep into hell. Enola Gay circled Hiroshima three times before returning home. At 9.30 a.m., the Korea Navy Depot messaged Tokyo that a bomb had just been dropped. At 3 o'clock p.m., the Domain News Agency reported the attack on Hiroshima, but was still ignorant on the extent of the destruction. On the evening of the 6th of August, 1945, a senior Japanese government administrator reported the true extent. Instantly killed or seriously wounded were around 80,000. Estimates of around 90,000 to 166,000 people were believed to have subsequently died from September to December after the explosion. We won the race of discovery against the Germans. Having found the bomb, we have used it. We have used it against those who attack us without warning at Pearl Harbor. 
against those who have starved and beaten and executed American prisoners of war, against those who have abandoned all pretense of obeying international laws of warfare. We have used it in order to shorten the agony of war, in order to save the lives of thousands and thousands of young Americans. We shall continue to use it until we completely destroy Japan's power to make war. Only a Japanese surrender will stop us. On the 7th of August 1945, Vice Chief of the Imperial Army General Staff Torashiro Kawabe was shocked at the ruin of Hiroshima, but said that the Imperial Army must march forward. Millions of leaflets were printed to warn major Japanese cities of possible imminent atomic attacks. The next day, the leaflets were distributed, but Nagasaki did not receive them until after they were bombed. On the 8th of August, Foreign Minister Shigenori Togo called Emperor Hirohito from Hiroshima to end the war. Togo requested the Soviet ambassador Naotake Sato to persuade the Soviets to negotiate Japan's surrender. But Soviet Foreign Minister Evicheslav Molotov told Sato that nothing was going to stop the Soviet Union from invading Japan the next day. The Japanese government did not formally convene to talk about surrender. On the 9th of August, the Soviet Union declared war on Japan and invaded Manchukuo, a puppet state of the Empire of Japan in Manchuria. The path was clear for the restoration of Chinese sovereignty over the Manchuria region. The atomic bomb, codenamed Fat Man, was loaded on bomber Boxcar. Colonel Paul Tibbetts was present at the pre-flight briefing at 11 o'clock p.m., an hour before the 9th of August. At 2.15 a.m., the boxcar crew boarded the plane. Two weather planes, Lag and Dragon and now Enola Gay, took off to monitor weather conditions at 2.58. At 3.47 a.m., boxcar, with Major Charles Sweeney piloting, took off. This is Major Charles W. Sweeney of Quincy, Massachusetts, pilot of the Great Artiste the second B-29 to drop an atomic bomb on the Empire. Major Sweeney, give us some of the details of the whole flight. At 3.51, the Great Artiste took off. At 3.53, Big Stink followed. But their target was not Nagasaki, but Kokura. The weather planes reported at 9.10 that Kokura and Nagasaki had cloud cover, but the visibility was sufficient. At 9.50, Boxcar and the Great Artiste headed for Kokura, but Big Stink was nowhere to be found. They waited for 30 minutes. These 30 minutes were perhaps the most valuable 30 minutes for Kokura, but not for Nagasaki. At 10.44, Boxcar arrived at Kokura, but it was covered in haze. Their aim point could not be seen. Three bomb runs were made, but the drop was consistently called off. Flak and fighters appeared, forcing the plane to abandon their search. At 11.32, after some discussion, Sweeney turned to Nagasaki. At 11.56, Boxcar and the Great Artiste arrive at Nagasaki. The city was covered with clouds, but some gaps allowed a drop. At 11.58, Bombardier Kermit Behan released Fat Man. This is Captain Kermit K. Behan of Houston, Texas, Bombardier of the Great Artiste. Captain Behan, what was your most outstanding experience on this historic flight? Boxcar and the Great Artiste took a sharp turn to their right and left respectively. At 12 o'clock noon, the Imperial Supreme War Council of Japan met to discuss a conditional surrender. Two minutes later, Fat Man exploded. Estimates between 40,000 to 75,000 people died the instant the atomic bomb exploded. Another 60,000 people suffered serious injuries. By the end of 1945, the number of casualties could have reached 80,000. I'm not emotional. I didn't have a first goddamn thought. Or I'd have told you what it was. I did the job and I was so relieved that it was successful, you can't understand it. At 12.30, the Supreme War Council heard of the Nagasaki bombing. The debate on surrender continued. Nuclear physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer, director of the Los Alamos laboratory that designed the actual bombs, cabled Lieutenant General Leslie Groves, director of the Manhattan Project, the top secret research project that led to the development of the atomic bombs. He shared the shipping schedule for more atomic bombs. And to impress him, takes on his multi-armed form and says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. On the 10th of August, an agreement still could not be reached on the terms of surrender of the proclamation defining terms for Japanese surrender or the Potsdam Declaration, issued by U.S. President Harry S. Truman, 
UK Prime Minister Winston Churchill and Chairman of China Chiang Kai-shek. We shall completely destroy Japan's power to make war. It was to spare the Japanese people from utter destruction that the ultimatum of July the 26th was issued at Potsdam. Emperor Hirohito broke the tradition of imperial non-intervention in government and pushed for the acceptance of the Potsdam Declaration, but the cabinet remained divided. The Domain News Agency defied the military and messaged the Allies that Japan has accepted the Potsdam Declaration. The U.S. broadcasted that Japan had surrendered. General Groves reported that the next atomic bomb would be ready for shipment on the 12th or 13th, with the next bombing on the 17th or 18th. Here it is, General Groves. Plutonium. But President Harry Truman ordered a halt to the destruction. On the 11th of August, U.S. Secretary of State James Byrne rejected Japan's surrender. The condition was that the authority of the emperor and the Japanese government should be handed to the supreme commander of the allies before the Japanese people freely vote for the ultimate form of government of their country. On the 12th, Emperor Hirohito accepted Byrne's conditions. On the 13th of August, the Supreme War Council discussed Byrne's conditions. Emperor Hirohito ordered all military activity to stop. Some small group of suicidal military officials, led by Major Kenji Hatanaka, and Lieutenant Colonel Jiro Shizaki plotted a coup against the Emperor. On the 14th of August, Emperor Hirohito called together the Supreme War Council and his cabinet to announce his decision for an unconditional surrender. They ultimately agreed. They sent their message of surrender to the Allies. While this was going on, thousands more Japanese were firebombed to death. On the 15th, Hatanaka and Shizaki failed with their coup. The two and others committed ritual suicide on the grounds of the Imperial Palace. Not long after, Emperor Hirohito announced Japan's decision to surrender over the radio. It was the first time for many Japanese to hear his voice. On the 2nd of September, Japanese officials signed the formal Japanese Instrument of Surrender, officially ending World War II. There have been arguments about whether it was the Hiroshima-Nagasaki bombings that ended World War II, or if it was the Soviet invasion of Manchuria. The Soviets ending the war would have probably made more sense if Japan signed a formal surrender with the Soviets themselves. Let's just go for the safe answer and say that they both contributed to the end of the war. The bombings might have ended World War II, but it seemed to have just sparked the Cold War. Given that every time another potential world war was discussed, it was automatically given the title of a nuclear war. And that Cold War probably has largely to do with Russia's invasion of Ukraine today. Given Russia's animosity with the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, the organization formed after World War II, a huge contender during the Cold War. On the 29th of August 1949, the Soviet Union conducted its first nuclear test. The US responded by creating the hydrogen bomb, a nuclear weapon that's a thousand times more powerful than Fat Man and Little Boy. Tactical nuclear weapons would then follow. By 2022, US would have 5,550 nuclear weapons, 1,800 retired, 2,361 available, and 1,389 active. Russia, on the other hand, has 6,257, 1,760 retired, 3,039 available, and 1,458 active. Japan, which probably has the most reason to have nuclear weapons, has none.